Greetings, folks. Today we are going to be painting up one of my Death Guard for my army that I have now named Death Knell. Death Knell are pretty much bell towers for when someone's dying or somebody important died or, you know, usual thing like the two bell ring when someone important died. Uh, generally, the theme for my army is just Death Knell. Like, that's their name. I kind of based them off like a weird combination of like metal rock with undead flesh. I mean, here's one that I finished earlier. I kind of converted uh, one of the Age of Sigmar Nurgle miniatures to be my uh, champion with this giant, uh, I think, power axe or bubonic axe? One, one of those two. Great cleaver. Yeah. It's pretty much their general theme, that nice, like, black color with the bronze shaded on top. A little weapon, all messed up, random power pack. So yeah, I'm going to be recreating it, but maybe have it a little bit different. Yeah, upgrade it before I start working on my whole army. Because this was my test, and I dropped him. Whoops. Because this guy right here is just the test to see how it came out, which so far I'm loving it already. Just needs a little fixing up. Which is what we're going to be doing with this guy here. He'll be the new and improved version. So, starting things off, I've already based this miniature in a Abaddon Black. Not necessarily a primer, but more of a, uh, a paint slab on top of it. Almost as if you were applying a primer without the spray can. <laughs> base paint. That's pretty much what they are. So, starting things off. Always make sure you shake your paints before you use them, because sometimes the paint additives and the pigmentation and whatever water molecules are inside of it separate. It is common with Citadel paints as well. Very common. So first, we're going to be using uh, Retributa Armor, and we're going to be dry brushing this onto the whole miniature. We'll be touching up the teeth in the fleshy bits later. But first, we want to have this nice rich bronze coat that we're going to absolutely destroy later. <laughs> Just get it on your palette. I'm going to dry brush the whole pipe of him. I want to dry brush downward and not necessarily upwards because I want to catch every fine detail on this miniature. Just have the brass really hit the edges of it, of the sculpt, so that way it creates a nice edge highlight. And doing it downwards makes it so it hits everything that is on top of the miniature, which is where the light will catch when you're looking at it from an upwards point of view or downward or wherever. Just apply that all over. I almost dry brush the other way because it's kind of a sense of habit. When it comes to my other dry brushes, I want to like try to cover the whole thing in every nook and cranny. But for this specific one, I want to go downward. See, it gives it that nice, like, rich bronze sort of feel. That's going to be absolutely ruined later with a few washes. Alright, just going to wash my brush here. And the best part about using this right here, it's a wooden board of mine that I use for sculpting, is I could just apply this brush onto it, and it would just soak up every single part of water. It's wood, and paper, and, well, toilet paper, napkins, whatever. They absorb the water a lot better than any other material, so it's a lot easier to get it off of your brush, especially when it comes to this wooden board I have here. Okay, so that's just phase one. Now for the second part. I'm going to be slapping a known oil wash all over this guy. This one is a known oil gloss. There's not really a difference between them, it's just this one's more, well, glossy. I'm going to be applying this all over it. Just let it seep in, pull in everywhere. Get into all the nice nook and crannies. Except for the gun. I won't be putting this on the gun. I 
pretty much I really like the Death Guard. Super fun. One of my favorite factions of 40k. Uh, well, for all you veterans out there, 30k, which just means pre-Horse Heresy. Uh, Horse Heresy was just a giant event which it split the Space Marine factions in two. Uh, alongside the Primarchs where you have good and evil pretty much. Just one worshipping, you know, demons and chaos gods. The other, just regular poster boys of GW. I'm not salty or nothing. Freaking ultramarines. <laughs> Win every time. I swear. Alright. Now that this is applied. Oops, I almost forgot that part there. And there. And also here. <laughs> I'm forgetting so many different parts. Okay, now I'm done. Now that that is done, we'll let this dry for about mm, three or four minutes. And then we will get started on the additional phases and touch-ups before we get to the fleshy bits. Alright, now that that is done, I'm going to be a, uh, messing with this chainmail here and the little pipe there, and a few of the other metal bits lying around hidden within. And we're going to be first hitting those up with a Stormho Silver. This is a nice uh, sort of bright tone silver. I'm going to be applying this to each and every of those parts, and I just dropped the brush I was going to use. Whoops. <laughs> I need to figure out a better way to place all these. Alright, here we are. So, we're going to be using our very small, thin layer brush, because it's easier to get on these anyway. Getting some from our pot here. I'm going to be applying it to those parts right here. Generally, this color scheme is a very warm tone, if you will. Warm tones being that the... Well, the black is and the silver are more in the cool tone spectrum, but with this brownish bronze that we've attached, kind of like a brownish uh, orange, this is more alongside the warm spectrum. So these two conflict in a way where it gives us a very nice look. And has a bit of contrast between what we want. And it makes finding details a lot easier. Put some of that weird little flesh pipe. Just gonna check to make sure I didn't miss any more. I guess I could hit up those handles right there. Oh no, this is me trying to improve my uh, color scheme before I commit it to my whole army of 2k Death Guard. I mean, I know 9th edition is coming out, so probably a lot of things are going to change, but hey, we'll see what happens. Well, I should say 1k, so I got some wiggle room. I'm going to get some off and actually dry brush some of this onto these little shoulder panels here. Try to get those high definitions of the bolts within it. Okay. Now that that is done and drying, I'm going to start getting to those fleshy bits. First, I'm going to use my Corax White I have right here. Got to mix it up a lot. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes the paint pigmentation separates. Pigmentation. Some of the paint pigments separate. So 
So I'm going to be applying it all over here. That little tongue stick it out. Some of the back parts here and there. Now the reason why it shows white is because it has a nice contrast between it, but it gives it all this weird pale like some some pale flesh look. I'm not I'm not sure how to describe it. I guess my inspiration for it was lichen, like a little moss you see growing everywhere on trees. The the white the white looking one. Looks like a bunch of clusters. I mean, it's common over here where I'm at. I'm going to be hitting these horns up with that same color too. The teeth will do later. I have a specific color for those to help separate them from the white. And this is another good tip too. While you're painting miniatures and you have like a large army you're working on, you want to knock it out in batches. A good way to do it is while one piece of it that you want a specific color to be as you're drawing, you can work on the other sides. As long as you don't accidentally touch the paint. I've done that a few times. We yeah, are generally, as you see, I painted that silver up and then I'm having it dry as I'm working on these little bits up here. Now you, it just generally works, but if let's say you apply to wash, you don't want to move it around because you might make whatever wash you applied, sift around your panels or parts that you want to have a certain color and spread it all around. Probably don't want that. A little more on this here. Just making sure I got every nook and cranny here because when this dries, I want it to be as covered as possible. I usually do two coats, but I prefer having a one coat here because I still want it to have this nice little gray tone to it. It's this nice pale withering beginning the rot flesh color. Covered in lichen. Oh, almost forgot about this skull right here. Skull that's been affixed to a grenade. <laughs> Right before we call it good, I'm just double checking to make sure. Yep. 
Okay. Now with that drying, we're going to be using our known oil wash again. We're going to be applying these to those metal bits we were messing with earlier. Oh, no. I forgot what I was going to do. This little flesh bit here. But you know what? I think it's fine like that. I just have it like a weird cord pipe, maybe make it more black. So I'm just going to apply this almost heavily. So I want it to be very dark tinge. I could use a dark silver, but this one in particular will work out better. And this is called there too. Although it looks more like a grenade, so that's fine. Now with all that applied, I'm going to let it do its thing for about drying for three minutes and we'll get to work on the other parts. Okay, now that that is done, we're going to go on to the next step of the fleshy bits color. For this part, I'm going to be using a very thin down application of Druchi Violet over it to give it a nice blood flow sort of look. Like uh, exposed veins almost. Well, not exposed, uh, just very close to the skin. Because, unlike what some textbooks and things you've been told, your veins are always red. It's just the light hitting them. Uh, from your skin. So when they're under your skin, they have this sort of blue tinge that's just light reflecting off of them, giving a weird look. So I just want to apply this to each part. I want to have a certain definition of shade. This very light violet look. And if it comes out too violet-y, I could just go back with the dry brush and slap more white on it, maybe a tan. And I'll be doing the same for the horns up here, but I'll be using more of this violet tinge. With a heavy application, I'm going to be using it downward. Still leaving some white there. Because later I'll be doing a nice little dry brush blend of a lighter blue. Give it this nice sort of weird bioluminescent glow. Speaking of which, I'll actually be putting some into these eye sockets here. And then around the area just a little bit. Okay. I'm 
Now, while that is drying, we're going to get a little crazy here. I'm going to be using this technical paint called Typhus Corrosion, and this will help corrode some of the parts on this miniature. And when I mean corrode, I mean literally corrode. You want to be using a really crappy brush of yours that just kind of gave out. You're going to be using it for the last moments of its life, pretty much. Because <laughs> this uh, paint is a... It's, it's hard to describe. What it does is it leaves a fickle residue and sort of corrodes whatever paint is under it. Give me a nice rust effect. We're putting it on these little parts here. And this too, it's almost like you're putting on some dirt. It's in the cracks here, and just really spread it out. And I'm just going to be putting it all over the blade here. Because the blade right now is just black. I'll be touching it up later. I want that to be absolutely wrecked. We'll apply some down here. Yeah, because with this put on, it gives it a very nice looking rust look. I'll put some on the skull here. Okay, now I'm going to let that all dry for about mm, three minutes, and then we'll get back to the rest of it later. Alright, now that that is done drawing, we're going to go on to the next step. Which is where I'm going to be doing that nice little dry brush sort of thing. Just making sure my brush is completely dry. I'm going to be using this Baharath Blue. Which is a layer paint. To get some on my brush here, I'm going to be dry brushing it. I'll be applying it to the very high edges of this. This gives it a nice purpley blue hue going on here. I'm going to be using that same blue and dry brushing the spot where those three eyes are. So this will help point out the details, but also give it a nice subtle glow effect once I start working on that spot. I'll give the ridges on that the same treatment. A little bit there in the pipe. Give it a nice little pop out. Now I'll get some more applied to the handle here. Get a nice cool sort of bronze look going on. Like a bronze with a blue tinge to it. Cold steel. In this case, cold rust. Speaking of rust, now that that type of corrosion is done, it's a weird uh, corrosive paint that leaves behind a residue that almost gives it the appearance that it is rusty, like covered in clump and guck and other things. So to sell that fact even more, I'm going to be using my Troll Slayer Orange. I'm going to be applying a sort of a dip dry brush. Meaning that it's 
uh, stippling, sorry, dip, uh, stippling dry brush. So I'm going to be putting it in certain areas to give it that nice rust look I usually see on metal, on things like your car, uh, metal parts on the outside where dirt, grime, gunk, and water has collected on it over the years. Just going to stipple it here and there. And wash my brush. Then, I'm going to do the same thing but with a silver. And this I want to apply in certain specific spots to give it a, a sort of look where you wipe off that gunk on top of the metal piece and there's that nice uh, silver underneath still, just covered by the ages throughout the years really. So I'm using that storm hole silver again. I'm going to be applying it as a dry brush stipple, like how I did with the orange there. And I'll apply it to very specific parts of the blade. Maybe the little hilt there. Some parts here. Could use a sponge, but for something like this, I want to be very specific as possible. Okay. Now that that is done, what else can I do here? Oh yeah, the eye glow, and then the teeth. Washing my brush again. Now, since all this has that nice bluish and violet color to it, when I apply the Corax white again, but for the teeth, it would help separate it a lot easier. So I'll get a small layer brush here. Putting along the teeth. Try to catch the very top edge of it so that way there's still that blackish bronze undertone to help separate each tooth. Which is working out nicely. Now I'll be hitting up the very insides of those eyes there. To give it that nice glow effect. And now for the final part. The gun. Which honestly I'm not quite sure what I want it to look like. Hmm. I could just go the black route, but with this whole archaic theme I got going on here for the Death Nail, I need something. Perhaps I could paint it gray and then dry brush black on it. Or I should do it the other way around. Yeah, you know what? Let's try that. It's an experiment, because I'm trying to figure out exactly how I want my guys to look like so far. This is pretty much how I want him to look. Ooh, this is a nice, like, manatee gray. When I mean manatee gray, I mean, like, the kind of gray you see on manatees. Like that fleshy gray. Or, like, elephants, too. Almost like the model's gray color, too. The reason why I'm playing it a little wet is I still want that color underneath to just show very subtly underneath. All right, now that that's painted up, I'm gonna let it dry for about three minutes and get to work on the final touches. All righty. Now with that dry, I'm going to be applying 
a, uh, oops, wrong color. Oh, also wrong color. <laughs> wrong color. I have so many colors over here, I'm trying to figure out which one is my Black Templar. Here we are. I'll be using my Contrast Black Templar for the weapon. This will help make it more black while saving the gray undertone. And after this is done drying, I'll be applying a silver dry brush, and that'll be it for the miniature. I guess I could have painted a gun red and then apply it too to give it that blackish gray color, but yeah, this also works too. Not bad for experiment. I'm just trying to figure out how to paint the guns for my army. All right, I'm going to let that dry for about three to four minutes. And now start the final touch. And now for the final touch. Whoops. Now for the final touch before we are done for the day is I'm going to be dry brushing Storm Host Silver again onto the weapon. And then paint up the barrel at the end and then we are good to go. And this little guy is battle ready for my army and to be used as a reference. Combined with the other guy I painted. Again, downward motion. And there we are. One death knell for my death knell death guard themed, uh, sorry, my death guard death knell themed army. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Um, other than that, you folks have a great day and take care. See you later.